Okay, so I'm here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. As we can see, we had some fresh snow. And I'm here with Kyle Volz. Kyle works here at EAA. And uh, this particular airplane, this is a Stoll CH-750. And this is a staff-built Stoll CH-750 that was built, uh, what, I think about five years ago now by uh, EAA staff right here at, uh, at Oshkosh. And what's unique about this airplane, as we can see, we've got skis uh, installed on this airplane. So we're going to be taking it out for a flight. It's a beautiful day. Got some fresh snow and uh, been really looking forward to this. So we're going to go flying this morning and, uh, and take it out. And uh, we're here at the EA hangar. As you can see, we've got a, quite a variety of planes right here from uh, used by the EA Academy and so forth. And uh, tucked back here, I'm just gonna quickly sneak over here. We've got the One Week Wonder airplane here. And that's the one that was built in seven days by volunteers in uh, 2014 during the Air Venture Week. Beautiful little airplane and uh, really like that. And you can see all the signatures on the on the uh, paint scheme here. Look at all these signatures on here from all the people that contributed and worked on the airplane. On the tail here, that's some of the stops that the airplane has uh, has uh, visited. <laughs> EA chapters around the country. Nice panel. And uh, again, this is the EA hangar here at the Academy. But uh, like I mentioned, uh, the reason we're here is to go flying. So. Again, we have fresh snow on the ground. It's a nice, nice cold day, but uh, I think we'll manage to stay warm and uh, really look forward to a morning of flying. Actually, if you'll see it, we've got very beautiful blue skies, but uh, blowing quite a bit. So I'm going to give Kyle a hand here. Last time I tried to let it, I had skis on and I tried to let it get him, let me taxi on the taxi with snow and they, they wouldn't let me because it wasn't plowed yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I've got skis. He goes, continue to Bravo 5 or whatever it was. Okay. Windrill on the west side of that runway. Advise on official contact you have information. Oscar Star information Romeo, time 1453 Zulu, wind 280 at 14 gust 28. Visibility 10. Sky condition too close 2200. Temperature minus 07, dew point minus 11, altimeter 2980. Expect a visual approach, runway 270. All aircraft respect hold short instructions. Go to Stairman, runway 523 closed, runway 1331 closed. Taxi closures are Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Alpha 4, Alpha 5. Charlie, Foxtrot, Hotel, Juliet, Kilo. All taxiways and ramps have compacted snow. Brake and action advisories are in effect. Runway 27, code 333, 50% compacted snow. Runway 36, code 333, 50% compacted snow. There's a two-foot windrow on the west side of that runway. Advise on official contact. You have information, Romeo. Oshkosh Ground, good morning. H-Promo 53 Papa Whiskey is at the Weeks Hangar with information, Romeo. Departure to the northwest. Star 53 Papa Whiskey, Oshkosh Ground, runway 27. You can text me Bravo, Bravo 4, cross runway 23. Bravo, Bravo 4, cross 23 to 27, 53 Papa Whiskey. So oh, those of you that have uh, watched us fly in and out of Oshkosh, I mean, I know many uh, 
Many Zenith uh, folks out there have also flown into Oshkosh. Uh, this is a different perspective uh, today, flying in, out of Oshkosh. Uh, there aren't that many airplanes at all out here. We've got a snow plow here on the taxiway, and it's pretty impressive to watch these snow plows go by. And uh, we're here mid-February, a beautiful winter day. We had some snow uh, just yesterday. Uh, I grabbed the opportunity to come out here and fly uh, with Kyle here in the uh, half-built uh, Stoll CH-750. And uh, Kyle was just reminding me earlier that uh, this airplane has the O200 that uh, EA used to obtain the STC for uh, auto fuel use, correct? Yep, yep. Came out of the 150 that was used. And uh, so, like I mentioned, we're uh, in the staff-built Stoll CH-750. Now, what's unique about this airplane, and if you wouldn't normally know it out here because we are on the on the on the hard surface. Is we have uh, snow skis on this airplane, and uh, the snow skis are the uh, the wheel penetration type skis. So we actually have the wheels on here, and uh, I'm sure I'll be able to show uh, the video footage uh, showing probably the skis as well. But uh, so we have them on all three wheels, and uh, we'll be flying um, and taking off and landing uh, on uh, on on snow-covered grass fields as well. So really get a good feel of the capabilities of this airplane and what we can do. And, uh, you know, if you live out here in these northern areas, uh, that's really a, uh, one of the nicest things about flying is winter flying. Because if, once you get used to the cold, uh, you have a lot of fun out here. Now, you, you fly quite a bit in the wintertime too, don't you, Kyle? Yeah. Not a, as I'm getting older, not quite as much. <laughs> but, but I still enjoy it. It's always oh. smooth. The visibility when it's a good day is always really clear. You can see almost a green bay from Oshkosh sometimes. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. Nice dense dense air you don't and get uh, the thermals and all the bumps and stuff. So it's generally pretty smooth. Right. And then and then performance-wise too. You know, I, I don't know what the I didn't pay attention. What's the field uh, density altitude right now? We're probably yeah negative. It was 1,100 past, feet. Yeah, past uh, past a thousand negative. So. So again, good dense air. So even uh you know we're we're not going to be lightly loaded. We got two. As adults here, a bit of stuff in the back, including a shovel. Yeah, and, uh, a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but uh, we'll see the takeoff performance will be good on a cold day like this. Uh, you know, on a hundred degree day in the summer, that might not be quite the case. But uh, that's the one of the advantages with the with the cooler air. And again, Oshkosh Airport has uh, the distinction of being, you know, the world's busiest airport for that week, and it's by far the world's busiest airport from what I've seen. Yep, they have like three times more traffic than virtually any other airport. It's incredible, yeah. And uh, but now off season like this on a on a midwinter day like this, uh, there's just not much activity at all out but here. It's a nice, quiet airport, but uh, because of the of being such a busy airport, you know, the, the, got lots of good runway facilities here and so forth. So, and I can hear. I don't think it's coming through the audio, but I can hear uh, the skis rattling a little bit here. We're on some uh, icy, icy surface right here, and. Uh, but otherwise, the plane feels the same way, doesn't it? We're sitting, yeah. we're sitting exactly the same height because we're still on the gear on the on the wheels. And uh, we've just added the ski to that. The one thing that we won't be able to do that we normally would be able to do in an airplane is a run-up. So what we'll do is we've got a 6,000-foot runway here. And since the stole performs so well, um, the way I handle the, run, the the mag check is we'll get off off the ground with plenty of runway ahead of us to land. And uh, we'll do a quick mag check then because we won't have the ability uh, with the ice on the ramp to hold, right. even even without the skis. Right, and that's uh, exactly it. That's and the wheels, we wouldn't have the ability to hold the, right. hold the wheels or right. hold the brakes. Yeah, I remember doing that as well when I was learning to fly because uh, we had a 5,000 foot runway and it was a 172 and we couldn't have, we didn't have a spot to hold. So we'd, right. we'd be doing it while we're taxiing and then and, and again, taking off even. Yeah. Our brakes do work since we got wheel penetration skis. Right, right. But uh, wintertime flying. Oh. And we've had some ice lately underneath all the eight inches of snow we got in the past couple days, so. All right, brakes, seat belts and harnesses are good. Cabin doors are set. Flight controls, we're gonna make the box. Flight controls are free and correct. Instruments are set on the screen as we want them. 
Now it's set. Fuel quantity is set to the tank level, which is 9 and 8. Good. Gonna set the takeoff. We're not gonna do that mag check here. Volts and amps are both good. Oil temperature and pressures are both good. Flaps are up. We're not gonna use them. And transponder is set. And we're over to tower. Guys, tower. Good morning, Expert 153, Papa Whiskey is holding short of 27 at the Bravo 4, ready for departure. Expert 153, Papa Whiskey, Ashgast Tower, runway 27, you're cleared for takeoff, wind 3020, gust to 26. Clear for takeoff, 27, 53, Papa Whiskey. All right, finals clear, runway's clear, lights. Make sure full rich, fuel pump on. Wind and the dense air, they all right. combine to give yeah. us a really nice performance this morning. They, re they really do. They really do. I was definitely pleasantly surprised, and we can see the skis out there. We got uh, almost a 32 knot headwind, so it'll be wow. a little slow getting out to the, yeah. the runway we're going to. Yeah. But, uh, so 32 knots on a slow airplane, so our ground speed is. Uh, so we've got a true air speed of 85 and a ground speed of 53. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, you know, with the with the Continental engine, which is, you know, a good hundred horsepower, but not that's on a good day, of course. Yep. Um, you know, and, and as we saw, we had really good takeoff performance, but then we're we're giving up a little bit on the cruise side of it, you know, with the uh, repitching the prop, we could get a little bit faster. But again, the, the point of this airplane is, you know, you're already where you want to be. You yep. know, it's uh, we're not in a rush to get anywhere, and then of course we can land near virtually anywhere we want to. Yep. So uh, that makes makes just makes it that much more enjoyable. Yeah, well now we can see we had, uh, I don't know how much did they snow yesterday. I'd say we had, over the past um, 48 hours, we probably had about eight inches of snow. Eight inches, yeah. So we've got some good so. cover. And uh, because we've had some good wind as well, you we got some drifts going on as well. Yeah, a little bit, yep. And kind of like skiing, um, you know, the snow conditions as you, as a, as a as a ski plane uh, pilot, you've got to really learn to, to understand the snow conditions. you got to read it properly, and you have to, to adapt for whatever conditions you have out there. Yeah. That's the nice thing about where I work is we've got a lot of people who know a lot about it. Then you can talk to them and learn from them. Right, right. So there's, the, the conditions can vary greatly and affect your performance and affect how you do things. And so um, I'm always asking people at work uh, about, about, well, what do you think of this, or right, how would right. you handle that? So, and that's exactly it. And to do it safely, you just have to learn, and you have to you have to learn from others' experiences as much as you can. And yep. uh, especially old old timers, they've been doing this for many many years, and so they have a lot of experience flying skis. And it's always a good idea to learn from that. So we're runways right up here. We'll have to take a gander and see if we can. Uh, One of the hardest parts uh, when we're doing this is today we've got enough uh, wind that um, it's it's kicked up the snow so it's not just smooth and flat light, right. uh, which makes it a lot easier for us to see. But um, eight inches of snow covers up a lot of stuff on the ground, um, so it can be difficult to pick out where the runway is, and I can you can just barely see the sides here. So we're going to oh, make I a see. pass first. Yeah, I'm glad you see it because it's not till just you showed me right now that I <laughs> that I see it. Now we can. We can definitely see the actual markings, and there's a, a little windsock, or what used to be a windsock. And uh, they've got a nice hangar at the end of the runway here. That looks like a nice, uh, nice yeah. place out there. They've got a barn that looks like it's been converted. Yep. Got a couple places to hangar an airplane. Uh, so unfortunately, this is one of those runways where we've got a little bit of a challenge. Um, we try to be very careful of the neighbors. Right. So we'll line up and give it a shot this time and see how we can do. 
Try not to overfly neighbors and scare their uh, exactly. scare their animals and all that. We've got a pretty brisk wind, which is gonna make us work for our square pattern today. Sure. That's one of the things about flying off airport is you do want to be respectful of property owners and neighbors because you you want to don't want to abuse that privilege. Right. And. Uh, So we're turning base now again for the snow-covered grass runway. I'm glad Kyle knows this area because I would have never been able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things, once you once it's been pointed out, it looks kind of obvious, but before that, you would never, ever see it. Even the hangar that looks like a farm farm shed. So we're now just kind of during short final here. We can kind of see the berms on the side. And we've got these up. Yeah, we can see the snow conditions. We've got little, little. Snow dunes, I guess. Yep, what, drifts. Yep. Drifts, I guess. You're right. And they're kind of a kind of a regular pattern. And so with this, you want to keep enough power. You, you don't want to stop. Is that am I correct? Yeah. When, if we want to park it, park the plane. We always want to come back and uh, circle around and try and park in our tracks. We want to try and pack down the snow. Right. Um, friction can still make the skis a little bit warm. Um, I see. And so what we want to do is we want to give the, the do a couple things. One, we want to make it easier for us to start rolling when we're, or sliding again when we're done and um, give us a chance to pack down the snow and cool off the skis. So it does a number of things. And it looks like a pretty dry snow, not, not wet, but pretty heavy at the same time in the drifts. We're sliding a little bit here. Yeah, we got a good amount of wind today, so. Yeah. And you probably. to work a couple times to get some of this pack down and see if we can't get a spot to park. That's actually quite a bit of snow, really. Yeah, we're definitely floating above. We're not packing down to the right. to the ground, so. We can hear it, but uh, we're we're definitely uh, more than idle power here. We're about uh, a little over around 2,000 RPM, and uh, we we don't want to come to a complete stop because then we risk getting a little bit stuck. So, and the wind's messing with us too. We got a good wind.
it, oh, look, we still got the dots out on the yep. runways, don't we? Look yeah. at that. Cool. So one of the fun things about landing on the pavement with the skis is there's little like roller uh, wheels uh -huh. on the back. Right, right. You can kind of feel when the runway's about to come. And the <laughs> early warning system. Little, little right. runway feelers, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. There you go. And then there's the mains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Number 5-3, Papa Whiskey, you make a right turn, when able in contact ground, leave on the runway. Contact ground, when we're off to runway, 5-3, Papa Whiskey.